What's up, everybody? Welcome to Adults Grotto, all things geek and unique, featuring three men in a basement. Unfortunately, it's just me in my basement right now. The other two men from this basement are out doing adult things. So my name is Otto. This is my grotto. And um, if you've never watched one of our live videos, we do a live video on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, we've got about 26 videos right now where we talk about all things geek and unique, comic books, comic book calls, CGC ratings, CGC expectations, um, stuff about new movies, all stuff pop culture, very popular right now are our comic books. So it's my pleasure to talk about some books that I have. This video is called Five Slabs in Seven Days. So um, I'm a collector. Like I've always said, I've been collecting since I was about uh, maybe 12 years old. Uh, I did take a big hiatus off, obviously, to have family, go to college and raise my family and stuff like that. But now I'm back and I've been buying lots of fun books. And I'm actually, I do, I'm very fortunate. I was able to finish up about a year and a half ago my X-Men run 1 to 300. No, they're all not slabbed. No, they're all not near mints. But I do have 1 to 300, which was my biggest collection by far. So what I found lately is that I've been actually buying slabbed version of the raw copies of books that I really, really enjoy. So I want to start off with this book because on Instagram, I'm going to have this for first appearance Friday. Although this is definitely not Jean Grey's first appearance or Phoenix's uh, first appearance. This is what I consider the first appearance of um, Jean, uh, Dark Phoenix. She actually appeared, though, in 134. That's what CGC represents it as. But in my opinion, this is X-Men 135. In my humble opinion, the first appearance of Dark Phoenix. Uh, first appearance of Senator Kelly, though. Very interesting. Who became a very important character in the um, movies. Story written by the most awesome Chris, Chris Claremont and the incredible Mr. John Byrne. Uh, this is a cover swipe to X-Men 56, done by Roy Thomas and Neil Adams. And in this book, Dark Phoenix is out of control. She is running rampant. The Dark Phoenix uh, power has just completely enveloped her. She's gone completely nuts. She's flying through the galaxy. She destroys the planet. She destroys the X-Men. And she is just bonkers. All right. Um, so this is something that I'm going to show off on Instagram for a first appearance Friday along with some books. Now, I like this grade. Why is this an 8.5? Uh, because I have a 101 at an 8.5 also. This not a very pricey book. I could have bought it at a higher grade, but I'm a very linear collector. And what I mean by linear collectors is I like to have books that are relevant of the same grade. To me, it's not about the dollar value. It's, it kind of is, but it's also kind of about the collectability of it. And I'm going to get into that when I show you two more books that I just actually picked up as part of my uh, five slabs in seven days. So, um, X-Men, 135, my first appearance of uh, Dark Phoenix. Yes. What would you like? I have my assistant, Cristiano Alfred. He's down here right now, kind of help me out. What can I help you with, young fella? Do you want to, you want to come behind? Okay, you can come behind a bar and see what we have. So everybody, this is my assistant, Cristiano Alfred. Cristiano, say hi to everybody. Hi. Hi. The camera's right over there. All right. So let me get do some talking. All right. So now um, I was at a show this past weekend with um, some of my buddies. Bernie 1869 was there, and it was a small show. Um, but what was really good about it is was a lot of different vendors from the area, and um, so there were a lot of different books that I, you know, a lot of different vendors who had a lot of different books. And you know, if you go to local cons, a lot of the same vendors have a lot of the same books for a lot of the same prices. So I uh, didn't really know what I was going to buy because I did make a big purchase, and I'm going to show you that. I think it's my last book. But uh, as I was looking through some books, I found a new vendor, a really nice guy. And sticking with, with my X-Men, he had both of these books. X-Men 121 and 120. Both already graded, <laughs> both at a CGC 9.4. And I was shocked. I was like, are you kidding me? You have both of these books. Now, these books are some of my favorite runs. This story arc can go back all the way to Giant Size X-Men 1, where Logan left the Canadian forces, and Jim Hudson, a.k.a. Vindicator, Weapon Alpha, had to go after him. Um, X-Men 109, I actually need to complete this set, and I'd like to get that book at a 9.4 also, just so I'll have all of the key Alpha Flight books at a 9.4. So in this story, I don't know for what reason, is they do go to Canada, 
Um, and Alpha Flight is absolutely waiting for him. And they knock the X Men around. I mean, Sasquatch, uh, Shatterstar, or Shatterstar, North Star, Aurora, Shaman. They absolutely tool on the X Men and really lay on the smack. Um, I don't know if Puck was there too. I'm pretty sure Puck was there also, and uh, Vindicator. So they just really lay on the smack after um, Jimmy Hudson got his butt kicked in X Men 109. 121. They keep going, and the fight's a little bit. Um, more vicious and they keep going and the story ends and they part ways and everything like that. So that's how it ends. And then John Byrne eventually gets his own story line for Alpha Alpha Flight and Alpha Flight number one. And then, spoiler alert, if you have Alpha Flight number 12, he kills Jimmy Hudson, a.k.a. Vindicator, like he always does. He John Byrne loves to kill people. So, um, love these two in my collection. Uh, 120, 121, both CGC 9.4. Off white to white pages. That's very linear to me. Like I'd say my comic collection is linear when I do stuff like this. Uh, Bernie eighteen sixty nine, the executive producer, will say it's not linear because they are different CGC labels, old label versus a new label. All right, I'm OCD, but I'm not that OCD. So these books are exactly where I want them. Uh, also, great price for both of them. Um, this I think was about thirty dollars under GPA, and this was about. Um, $20 under GPA. So the gentleman gave me a great deal on them. And that's somebody I'm actually going to do a lot more business with because, um, so when you buy the books and you're giving a deal, like we're every, it's all about the art of the deal. And that's very important to me. So, um, I really like that. And I know what the books were going for. So he gave me a great deal for both of them. So I walked out of the place. Very, very happy. All right. So those are my two X-Men books. Uh, so the three of the books that I have to show now I'm going to go with some Fantastic Four. You know, Fantastic Four is probably my third favorite group. I'm definitely an X-Men fan first. Um, then probably Fantastic Four, so my second second favorite big group. The Avengers, I like them a lot. I loved them as a kid. Um, hated them in the 90s, um, but that's it. So I did find a, I did pick up a good book on Instagram. They, won a lot, they do a lot of raffles. You know, $10 raffle here, $10 raffles there. I've spent some money on raffles in the past year and a half. I've won one or two big books. Um, but this, my buddy, X Illusionary on Instagram was raffling off. And he needed a closer. And I'm a very superstitious person when it comes to certain numbers. I always like to be the closer. I always like the one spot, the 11 spot, the 13 spot, and the 21 spot. Just numbers that I really enjoy. So he was raffling off this book, Fantastic Four 67. So I won this book for 10 whopping dollars. All right. Uh, it is a 7.0. It's the it was came out in October of 1967. This is the first appearance of him, Adam Warlock, and the Cocoon, which we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Uh, we have the off-white cover. We have a lot of characters on it. We have um, Crystal. I think the Recorder, Fantastic, uh, the Fantastic Four. I forgot who the other guy is. We have the Thing, and the first appearance of him. Then we transform into. Then him goes into. Uh, the Thor line and stuff like that. So he really has, before he becomes out of Warlock, he does have a lot of different uh, personas before he takes on. But for 10 bucks, a book from 1967, from off-white to white pages, um, it's pretty good. Will I sell this book? I probably won't. You know, uh, for 10 bucks, I could probably flip it on eBay and make a couple times my money. But it's a key book. It's a white book. It's a seven. Um, and I'm very happy with it. So that is my big raffle win um, for a while. So now I'll probably go try for a while, but I'm still trying. Lately, my thing with raffles is for the bigger raffles, I'm just buying one spot for 10 bucks. And if I hit, I hit. I'm not buying, you know, 10 spots for $100 unless it's something big. I did get Burns um, last year when I bought a bunch of spots for a Showcase 22 first appearance of Green Lantern. And I lost that one. So that kind of burned me. I'm still sour about that. So now we have one of my 20... 18 wants a huge want and i want to give a shout out on instagram to my buddy four comics for this book i know he had it he was sitting on it for a while and it is ff number 13 the first appearance of the red ghost and the watcher all right so why this book why this grade um why was it important to me well this is a book you don't see that often and when you do you don't see it in a grade that it is. I did pay GPA for it, uh, but I'm okay with that because this book, I think, has a lot of legs. And this is a book that you don't see at a high grade. Um, it's off-white to white pages. 
and it is the first appearance of the Watcher. Why I think I really, why I really love this book is because this is going to be Stan Lee's character. We know it. Um, he's been in every movie so far. It's kind of unwritten, but you know, in the Guardians of the Galaxy, when they shot, when they showed him on the planet with the other Watchers, and he's saying, "Come on, guys, I still got more stories." You know that that's going to be his character. What's very funny is my good friend uh, Tim Una Matrix Mono on Instagram said, even when Stan passes, God forbid that day happens, they're just going to CGC him into every Marvel movie. He's going to write that into his living will or into his movie thing or something like that, that he will appear in every movie. And with the CGC capabilities, absolutely. So when they say what was Stan Lee's character, he was the Watcher. And, you know, growing up, the Watcher was a very funny character for me because he was very big and very pop, very big, um, you know, larger than life, obviously, you know, giant sized. And he just kind of watched everything. It didn't really get involved. Uh, he was very influential with the first appearance of Galactus and the Silver Surfer and the FF books. Um, and again, this is a book that you don't see in a very high grade. Not that this is a very high grade, but an eight and a half to me is a high grade. Looks very good. There's a little bit of writing on it. Um, this book, to my knowledge, has not been pressed or cleaned. Um, I've also stated in my videos before that I'm definitely a fan of pressing my raw books. I'm not a fan of cracking and pressing unless I feel that I'm going to get a signature on it or I'm going to flip it um, or I see, or I buy it with pressable defects. There's really not many pressable defects I can see on this. So I'm going to hang this in my grotto, you know. I'm going to show it predominantly. And you know what? It's a great cover book. It's hard to find. I did see, you know, for two years I was seeing three and a half, four and a half, a couple of raws. Guys weren't budging on the price. And I did find a four and a half that had a signature on it at a good price. You know, I'm all about the art of the deal. I have cash. You know, give me a little deal. Knock 20 or 30 or 40 bucks off it if I'm willing to give you cash. I'm not using my debit card. People won't do it. Last day of the show, I offered the guy, you know, $50 less in GPA. He didn't want it, so oh well. You leave with the book, I leave with my money, and that's about it. Not good business, if you ask me. So this is going to wrap up my um, five slabs in seven days video. Please, uh, you know, follow us. Give us a subscription again. Give us a subscription on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. We are uh, Roger Levesque on Instagram, Bernie eighteen sixty nine, and I am Everdado. And this is my grotto. And I am out. Talk to everybody soon. Thank you for watching.